Welcome friends, this is Mike Williams and I'm back with another guitar video. A friend asked if I could build them a retro looking guitar. To do this I started with an AXL Bel Air shell which is essentially a Les Paul Jr. body style and then let my imagination take it from there. By doing the work myself and using non-branded but quality parts I was able to deliver the guitar for $170. And here is the cost breakdown for those that are interested. The guitar shell itself which I purchased from YouBuyGuitars.com was $75. The bridge pickup was $15 off of AliExpress. The wiring, the pots, and the tuners, since I had them in inventory, were no charge. The pickguard was purchased from Amazon for $7, the vibrato off of eBay for $22, the knobs off of Amazon for $14, the frets $11 from Philadelphia Luthier, the custom truss rod cover $15 also from Philadelphia Luthier, and finally a personalized logo which I purchased off of eBay for $10. The total cost $169. So here are the Facebook clips I posted for my friends. They're all stitched together. I also included some still pictures at the end of the video and the comment section is open. I hope you enjoy the video and have a great day. Hey, good morning friends. This is Mike and it's been a while since um, I did a guitar video and what you're looking at here is an Axel or an AXL Les Paul Junior style guitar and I bought this off of James Hood's website it's called YouBuyGuitars.com, and I think he's out of stock on this. I don't know if he's going to get it back, but in any case, I saw this on his website going back about a month ago. It's beautiful. I placed the order. It's hard to see, but the finish is kind of a metallic orange. Les Paul Jr. style has the, the one pickup here. And so I'm putting it together for my brother. He asked if I can do this build for him, and he wants it to look uh, very retro. So to do that, what I'm going to do is to make it look retro. So I have a, a Perloid pickguard that's going to go on the guitar. Um, we're also going to put a vibrato on the guitar. This is a Bigsby knockoff. I also have some pickups here that are just the face plates. All right, so it'll look like that. And we're going to have uh, a Mighty Might Bridge that's going to go on the guitar here. And so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to put the frets in. And that's going to be the first order of business. And then once I get the frets in, I'll put all this in. And uh, it should look quite beautiful. I'm also going to put in um, chrome volume and tone knobs. Okay, so it's going to look real nice when it's done. And... Um, what I'll do is I'll show you the uh, progress as I move along. It won't be a full-blown, this is how you put frets in, this is how you wire pickups and all that stuff. It's just going to be major stopover points where I've done some work to the guitar and it's coming along and I'll show you what it looks like. And so you see it now, essentially uh, completely hollowed out a shell. And we'll make our way through the video until it's completely done. Okay, so it's uh, later in the day, it's in the afternoon and... I've been working on this axle, this AXL for my brother, and you can see all the frets are in. They have been leveled, and I put the tuners in. The uh, the nut is uh, is now in. It's been glued. That's why we have the clamp there. So it's uh, it's moving along, but I'm going to call it quits for the day now, and uh, maybe I'll pick up sometime either tomorrow or in the early part of next week and when it's all done I'll show you it's gonna come out quite beautiful he's looking for a retro looking guitar something along the lines of a Dan Electro type of look um, except in a Les Paul style body and this is a Les Paul Jr. style body alright and uh, I've got big plans for this and it's gonna come out looking pretty good alright you guys have a great Saturday hey everyone it's Mike good morning Today, what I'm going to do is just a couple of things. One is I'm going to put the Mighty Might Bridge on the guitar, and I want to show you a couple of things before I actually do that. And I'm also going to uh, put the volume and tone controls in and wire up the electronics. It's a one pickup guitar, so it's just going to have one volume switch and one tone switch. Now, you can see that the guitar comes with the holes pre-drilled for the bridge. Now the holes are small and what I have, this is the Mighty Might 
bushing or anchor that goes into the guitar. And you can see it's small. And when I go to put it in, it doesn't fit. Let me see if I can show you that. Okay. okay, so what does that mean? It means that we have to drill this hole wider. And to do that, what you do is you start with a drill bit that just is just a tiny bit larger than the hole that's already there. And you go back and you see if your anchor is going to fit. If it doesn't, you go to the next size drill bit. You do it very incrementally, step by step. The other thing you want to do is you want to tape the hole off and press the tape in, punch a hole here through the tape. The reason why you want to put the tape on is so that the drill uh, will not lift up and off the top or the veneer of the finish. It won't chip it. Okay, the tape really helps to keep it in place. And you have to be very, very careful. That's why you have to start with small bits and work your way up. If you just try to drill with one large bit, you will chip all around the hole that you're trying to make. And then it's going to become a problem because it's going to look unsightly. Now, when you do this type of work, the best thing to do is to get yourself an assortment of drill bits. Okay, and, and this is what I have here. And you can see the blue tape on some of them. That's a marker so that I only go that deep when I drill, when I put the, uh, the anchors in the guitar, whether it be bridges or tailpieces. All right, so the standard drill bits that you're going to get, let's say from the Home Depot or something, are not going to have sizes this big. All right, so you really have to invest in that type of uh, drill bit set if you're going to do this work. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tape off the holes. I've already selected the drill bit. Here it is. Let me just show you. And you can see it's just a bit larger than the hole. And that's all I want right now. And then once I drill it, I'll place the anchor, see if it goes in. If it doesn't go in, I go to the next size drill bit, which is right here. Okay. All right, so I'll be right back. I'll show you what it looks like taped off. I won't show you the drilling because I need both hands to do that. And it's just me here holding the phone to film this. Um, but I will uh, show you the prep work. So I'll be right back. Okay, so here's the blue painter's tape. And you can see I opened the hole here to stick a little screwdriver in and move it around a little bit. And also here. All right, so I'm going to use the first bit. And what I did was I marked the bit. So I only go as deep as where that blue tape starts at the tip. Don't go beyond that. No need to. Okay, so let me do that now and I'll be back and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so I did the drilling. And when I go to put the anchor in, the hole is still too small. So now I have to go to the next size drill bit. Again, remember, do not start with a big drill bit because everything all around this hole, even if you have tape on it, will lift and splinter and chip and then you know you're really going to ruin your work take it very slow step by step okay so what i'm going to do now is i'm not going to show you each drill bit um, i'm going to get it to where the anchor slips in and then i'll show you what to do next okay so the drill did its work and you can see the holes no chipping that's what you want that's why you take it slow and you can see if I take this now and I drop it in, it'll go in. I may have to bang it down a little bit with a, uh, a fret hammer, but that's okay. A nice tight fit is the best. Now, before you do this, you have to run a ground wire from this hole here, which is the post, and it'll run into the, uh, the pot cavity over here. And this ground wire is very important because this is what's going to keep your guitar from buzzing because the guitar will be grounded properly to the post of the bridge. If your guitar has a tailpiece, then you would run it from your tailpiece into the, um, the pot uh, cavity hole and it will connect to the top of one of your pots. And I'll show you that when I get to it, okay? 
Now, these guitars come, and you're not going to be able to see this, but there's a pre-drilled hole that goes from this anchor hole here for the bridge straight to the, uh, the pod cavity. So I'm going to take this wire, and you can see I really stripped off a lot here. The reason is because that's the piece that's going to bend and be in the hole. And when you expose a lot of the bare wire, then you're ensuring that the post is going to touch and connect with the wire and uh, you're going to have a proper connection. Okay, what I'm saying is don't do it like this. That's okay for inside the cavity, this very short piece that's stripped here, because you're just going to solder that to the top of the, um, the volume pot. But for the post, you want to have as much exposed as possible to ensure that, again, you have contact. So I'm going to wire this through now. I'm not going to show you that. You'll see it later when I do the pots. You'll see what, uh, what I did and why I did it. But for now, I'm going to uh, put this in, and then I'm going to put the anchors in, and then I'll start on the uh, wiring up the, um, the potentiometers for volume and tone. Okay, so I'll be back. All right, so we're going to put the pots in, the volume and tone controls. Now, if you don't know how to do this, I would recommend going to the Seymour Duncan site, and I'll put the link in the show notes below. They have a very, very good uh, site for wiring schematics. And this is all we're going to do with this one. So all you need to do is stare at it a little bit, do the work once in a while, and you will catch on, trust me. Um, I was no wiring genius in the beginning, and then after doing all these guitars, it just falls into place. So um, I'm not going to need this because I've done it before, but I'm just showing you this because some folks get to this part and they're like, well, I don't know how to do this. Then they get stuck. So go to Seymour Duncan, and you can see you have options that you can select. One humbucker, which is what we have here. One volume control, which is what we have in one tone. One humbucker, one volume, one tone, and then they show you the schematic for that. All right, so I'm just going to do what this says, and we're going to put the pots in, and that's it. The guitar will be wired up to go. Now, one of the other things I wanted to point out is the reason why we have the bridge on so early in this process is because we're going to need the bridge along with the nut and the tuners to run the strings so that when we put the Bigsby on, the vibrato, that we know that the vibrato is aligned correctly. And I'll show you that when I get to it. But in case anybody was wondering why the bridge went on so soon, that's the reason. Because you want to make sure you have that vibrato your tailpiece essentially positioned correctly. And it's also going to allow you to line up the pickup properly. Now, in this case, it's not gonna make that much of a difference because the pickup has a blank uh, face plate. But if you have the pickups with the, um, uh, the pickup screws on them, then you wanna make sure that the screws are lined up um, underneath each one of the strings. In other words, you don't want your pick up too far left or too far right because a lot of times when they uh, route out these cavities for the pickups they leave a little room to be able to move back and forth to do exactly what I was just talking about which is an adjustment okay so all right you guys let me uh, do the wiring and I'll be right back okay so the wiring is all done and I'll explain this in a second the blue tape so the pots are in and the jack plate along with the jack is installed there's the wiring in the back there. And again, if you're unsure of how to wire, all you need to do is go to the uh, Seymour Duncan site and um, I'll have the link down below. Okay, so the next part is the trickiest piece of this. We have to put the, uh, the Bigsby on, and this is a knockoff Bigsby. Okay, so we'll just call it a tremolo or a vibrato. I think vibrato is the, the real official term. So what you want to do is the tip of the arm should be uh, a little bit beyond where the, uh, the pickup ring is going to be. Okay, general rule of thumb. Now to make sure that I align the Bigsby up correctly, what I did was I took this ruler, and it's an engineer's ruler. Okay, make sure you use an engineer's ruler when you do this work. And you can see what I did here was I taped off where the edge of the, the pickup cavity is, right here. So that defines a straight line for me. And I brought it down, and that's the edge of the left-hand side of the tape. Slide it over. 
again flush with the edge and there's the other end now why did I do that the reason I did that was because and by the way I temporarily put some felt pieces underneath the uh, the Bigsby so that when I slide it around I'm not scratching up the guitar the reason why I did that is because the way the Bigsby is going to line up again the tip of the bar a little bit beyond the bridge pickup on this particular guitar I've looked at other AXL Bel Airs on on the web you're going to see that the screw here to mount or the hole for the screw to mount the Bigsby is pretty much aligned with the volume pot right here and then the back of it is essentially aligned just below the tone pot right here right now these are just rough adjustments or measurements the key to this is going to be to make sure you have it lined up correctly is to put the bridge on the guitar okay and then run a high E string excuse me a low E string and a high E string attach it to the vibrato or the Bigsby and make sure it's all lined up in other words the strings are straight make sure it's not it's not starting at an angle here and then curving to the top of the uh, saddle so you want it to be straight up and the only way you're going to know that do not do it by eye is you're going to have to string up the low E and the high E on the guitar to do that adjustment best way to do it if somebody has a better way comment or email me but I found this to be the most effective way to do this um, again don't do it by eye all right so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to string up the guitar so that I can get this vibrato in the right position to make sure that it is aligned perfectly behind the bridge down the fingerboard through the nut and then into the tuners okay so uh, I'll be right back let me uh, put the strings on and I'll explain some more okay so I'm almost there this does take time so I don't want to make this sound like it's a quick you know down and dirty exercise but what I've done is I put the capo here to keep the strings anchored so that they don't move around because they're not going to be very tight around the tuners because the vibrato or the Bigsby you know is very fluid still so the strings are gonna have a lot of play in them the reason why I have the piece of paper here is so that the paper protects uh, from the string being pushed into the rosewood fretboard via the capo so if you're going to be doing work even when you change strings you should always slip a little something in between the strings and the fretboard to make sure you don't put little indentations in the first fret look at a lot of guitars and you'll see that there's a lot of indentations what is that from well some of it's from playing yes but many times what happens is people who play guitar guitarists they uh, when they change their strings they'll use a capo but they don't protect the fretboard and so the strings are essentially uh, being pushed into the fretboard that's why that's there okay so you can see what I did here now here's the low E here's the high E and you can see here's the uh, the low E saddle these saddles aren't slotted yet but it's it's in the middle of the, um, the saddle the same thing here with the high E now don't worry too much about this little slack here that's because the uh, the string is not tight but essentially that's why I have the tape here too is to kind of push it over to the left it would look like this all right so I'm, I'm almost there I'm almost there and I've got the the vibrato in place by just taping it down so it doesn't slide all over the place on me it's not in its final position so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to square off the area by taking a straight line going from here down and from here down and make sure that left and right I have it positioned correctly one of the things you want to be careful of is that you have enough clearance for when you put your tone knob on so it doesn't bang into the side of the vibrato or the tremolo or the Bigsby whatever you want to call it the whammy bar 
So there's more to be done here, and I'll show you what I mean by squaring it off. I'll do it, and then once I do it, you'll see. I'll have blue tape, and uh, you'll see that I'm trying to get it centered. Okay, so like I said, this part is very tedious. It can be time consuming, uh, but there's really no way of skimping around it because if you do, if you hose it up and you wind up drilling holes into the body, because that's where this is going, it's, we're going to drill holes into the guitar. And if you don't have it centered correctly and it's crooked, um, then you're going to be a sorry camper. I mean, you can redo it, but you're going to have these holes and you're going to have to plug those holes and all that stuff. So. Do it right the first time and take the time out to do that, okay? So um, let me go get my square right now, and I'm going to square it off and uh, make sure that I've got this um, perfectly centered. So I'll be back. Okay, so let me show you what I did here. You're going to see two lines of blue tape. Forget about this one. That's holding the, um, the vibrato in place. We have one on the left. We have one on the right. So what I did was I took an old square that I have, and I lined up the top of the square with the very top of the cavity for the pickup. And by doing that, I was able to line up the very edge of the cavity here and then follow the, um, the square with a line of blue tape. And the reason why I'm using the tape is because you don't want to be obviously marking up your guitar with marker or pencil or pen or whatever. And then I did the same thing on the other side. And that allowed me to get this blue tape here. So what we have now is a straight line going from the pickup cavity all the way back. And a straight line here from the pickup cavity all the way back. The vibrato should sit in between those two pieces of tape, those two straight lines. Okay, so this side, equidistant, the edge of the vibrato or the tremolo to the edge of the tape, the same here. Now, right now it's not showing that because it's leaning a little bit because the strings are off and I'm not holding it back. It should, it should look something like this. Okay, see that straight? Now remember, this blue tape here, the very front bar of the vibrato should be aligned perfectly with the top piece of this blue tape here. So by aligning this to this piece of tape, aligning the sides to this piece of tape, and this piece, you're going to have your vibrato centered. And you should be ready to go. Okay? And you can see where um, the strings are over the saddles properly. Might be a little bend here, but that's only because the strings, because it's not taut want to shift over a little bit. So if I move this over as an example, you can see where it's now straight. This side's, uh, this side's okay. All right, so that's how you do it. You have to just use some geometry. There's really no easy way around it, at least that I know of. There may be some kind of template that some company sells or whatever. I guess, you know, that would be great. In fact, that's an idea. <laughs> Maybe I can market a template. Um, but by doing it this way, taking your time, you'll get it positioned correctly and uh, you'll be out of the woods. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to take a marker and mark off where I have to drill and I'm going to fasten the vibrato to the, uh, to the guitar and I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so X marks the spot. You can see those are marker dots there. What I did was I took the marker right down the center of the, uh, the screw holes on the vibrato. It comes with the screws. Now what you want to make sure is make sure that it doesn't go through your guitar. Okay, these won't. You also want to make sure that they're long enough and strong enough to keep the vibrato in place. So if you have to get short of screws, you know, get them shorter but make sure that they're not so short that you have to plane and it's going to come ripping out on you uh, that's not going to look too cool especially when you're playing okay so now what i'm going to do is uh drill the holes now when you drill the holes make sure that you're using wood screw bits 
And let me just, I'll come back in a second. Let me just show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so that's a wood screw bit. See the tip? It has a point. Let's see if we can get this camera to focus. Preferably, this is what you want to use. The reason is because there's far less of a chance of the bit slipping or skipping on you. So once that point is touching the top of the body and you're pushing a little bit, that's where the hole is going to get drilled. If you use a bit other than a wood bit with the point on the front, then you run the possibility that, you know, everybody's done this, the bit slips a little to the left or the right, and you know, and then your hole is off a little bit. So just make sure you use the proper bits. And also make sure you use a bit that is going to accommodate the screw. Don't make it too small, because if you make it too small, I'm talking about the bit, and then you put the screw in, you run the possibility that you're going to chip the, um, the body. You're going to chip the finish. Now, some people will say, well, I don't care because the vibrato is going over there. But just as a rule of thumb, because you're going to be doing other work with drill bits and the vibrato is not going to go over the hole to cover it. Mm -hmm. So I'm just giving you a little tip here. Um, make sure that the, the bit isn't too small or too thin. In other words, the screw is way oversized for the hole you're going to drill because you will chip and flake the finish. Okay, so I'm going to drill the holes now. And uh, in a moment, the vibrato will be in the guitar. Okay, so there you go. The vibrato is on. You would do a Bigsby the same way. And make sure that if you put the felt underneath, like I did in the beginning, to make sure when I moved it around and scuffed the guitar, that you take the felt off. Um, you don't have to if it's very thin felt, but I took it off so that the, um, the entire horseshoe piece of this, the base, is sitting flush against the guitar. So that's it. That's the hardest part of this, and if you just, like I said, I know I'm sounding like a broken record, but if you just take your time, it'll come out looking great, all right? So that's going to be it for today. I'm going to, tomorrow, I'll put the pickup in and test her to make sure that, uh, we'll test the pickup to make sure it's uh, playing properly, that I got the wiring correct. I'm sure I do, but sometimes you never know. Okay, so that's it, guys. So I'll catch you in a couple of days when I make some more progress. Have a great Sunday. Okay, so she's all done. She came out beautiful. And you can see the custom truss rod cover. It says Road Runner. And that has to do with the person that I built this for, their love of muscle cars. And just to give a little summary, the guitar was a shell, which means there was nothing installed. Uh, it did come with the neck, but no frets. And it is an AXL or Axle Bel Air. If you go on the internet, you take a look at what these are running for. Of course, the, the real ones have the real Bigsby on it. They're going between $450 and $500. So this guitar, the shell itself, $75 from James Hood Guitars off of his site, You Buy Guitars, and the link will be down below in the show notes. Now I had to put everything else into the guitar, which includes the tuners. I had them in stock, in inventory, so there was no charge for that. I had the custom truss rod cover made. There's also going to be a logo here, but it's not in yet, but I'm not going to hold up finishing this video, waiting two weeks for the logo to come in. Frets, I installed all the frets, dressed them, leveled them, Came out great. This is a pick art I got off of Amazon for less than seven dollars. It's very nice. It's it's well made, and it's actually made for a Les Paul Jr. But of course, it fits this guitar perfectly because this is essentially a Les Paul Jr. body. Slight modifications, but essentially the same. The pickup I pulled out of inventory. The bridge is a Mighty Might Tunematic. The vibrato is a knockoff Bigsby. I got it out of China. By the way, these things work very well. So if you're not into spending a lot of money, the cheapest you can get a Bigsby like this, the horseshoe shape, is something like 120 bucks. A lot of them are pushing 150. Um, this was $20 off of AliExpress, and it's it's well made, works great. This is the first time I use these knobs. Um, they're really nice. They're well made. They have a, a weight to them, and on the sides. I don't know if you can see this, but uh, there's rubber, so it makes it really easy to, to spin the knobs. 
and they look nice and they complement the guitar really really well so that's basically it um, she plays great I'm not going to be doing any um, sound checks on it you'll have to take my word for it that she plays well and she does uh, the pickup is high output probably 14 12 to 14 thousand ohms it's a uh, a bridge pickup it has a lot of power a lot of presence and that's it and I know this person is going to be very happy I have been sending them pictures along the way as I was doing the build and they're very excited to bring it into their collection so there you go the total cost for this guitar less than $170 so another example of doing the work yourself and saving a lot of money and coming out with a very very nice guitar all right you guys have a great day and uh, we'll talk soon This place is surreal